curve. More like swerve, because this movie's trash. Okay, let's talk pros and cons of this movie. Pro, Julianne Huff. Con, the rest. So we start out on a country looking road and Julianne Huff is looking at her engagement ring. So she's either leaving a unhealthy relationship or running away from her wedding the day before. We don't know. So her fiance leaves her a voicemail about how they can't go on their planned month long Europe trip for their honeymoon anymore. Now she's listening to a dope playlist that her little sister made who seems awesome and her truck breaks down. She's in her fiance's truck and she finds flyers for Asian hookers and then she spills Pepsi on herself and then she takes off her shirt and she goes to the back of the truck to get a new shirt and then this hot white guy comes up and he takes off his shirt. So far, it's a really sad, mellow kind of theme for a porno. He fixes her car and she's like, sorry, I'd give you a ride, but you know, you're a stranger. But then she gives him a ride anyway. He says he was heading to the next town over and she's like, well, that sounds great. I'm gonna join you. He was like, okay. And then immediately starts saying some creepy shit that I can't even repeat because I try to keep this channel PG to PG-13. And she's freaked out and she tells him to get out of the truck and then he pulls a knife and he's like, no, keep driving. Like he's friggin' Miss Daisy. The hotel that he talked about going to in the other town earlier turns out to be abandoned, but he tells her this and like hints at some nefarious plans because he knew that Julianne Huff was coming and knew that her car was gonna break down and knew that she was gonna offer him a ride, I guess. So even though he hasn't been wearing a seatbelt this whole time, the seatbelt alarm starts dinging and she waits for him to go to buckle up and then she just like starts speeding toward a cliff and then he grabs the wheel and they kind of fight over it and then they sail off of the cliff and I rewatched it like four times and I can't figure out what the goal was. So she wakes up and she's hanging upside down and her leg is like caught in between the, the car seat and the car door and she can see his little footsie in the rear view mirror. Let's hope he's dead, but we know he's not. So her leg's stuck and her arm is sliced open and she grabs a denim jacket and then just tears it into strips for bandages using her Julianne Huff super strength. So she ends up snatching the pocket knife that he had been threatening her with uh, before he can wake up. And then serial killer hitchhiker, I don't remember his name, let's call him Randy, he looks like a Randy, he comes up and is like, you know, I don't think you realize how dire this situation is here with your leg and all the blood loss and you know, sucks to be you girl. And then he leaves. All right, that was a good waste of Randy's time and he got thrown off a cliff, but okay, bye. So the Julianne Huff super strength does not work on pulling legs out of smashed cars, which is inconvenient, but I guess everyone needs a kryptonite. She spends two days with her leg trapped between the seat and the door and does not try to move the seat once. Randy comes back and eats a sandwich in front of her, which is incredibly rude, and then he uh, demands that she tell him stories about guys that she slept with in exchange for her own sandwich, which is also rude. This movie is more uncomfortable than scary at this point. He somehow knows that she's lying and that the stories she's telling are her sister's story, so she doesn't get a sandwich and he leaves again. She spends another night hanging out in the truck and does not try to move the car seat in any of the six ways that most standard car seats will move. So she makes a little campfire and she gives herself a sponge bath. Hygiene's important when you're bleeding out. She did wake up with ants on her one night, which was scary, and then a horde of rats, and I'm pretty sure that's not how rats work. I'm not positive, but I don't think they travel in packs like wolves. I bet she kills one and then roasts it on her campfire. Oh look, she killed one and roasted it on her campfire. And she found a little ketchup packet for flavor. I love survivor movies and people being thrifty and Julianne Huff. I really am having a good time. She don't just stab a stick through the rat and roast it though. No, this ain't Castaway. This ain't Jungle to Jungle. This ain't Shrek. She fillets it for the most select cuts of rat meat and then she very carefully rotisseries it. But she's still gagging about this perfectly cooked rat meat like she just took a bite out of live one. Get your bear grills on and beef up a little bit, ma. Movie's only halfway over. Oh my god, how is this movie already halfway over? Nothing has happened. She finds her phone, don't know how it took her four days, and she tries to call her sister before she calls the police, but then Randy comes back and takes it from her. But he leaves her with a hacksaw, and she's like, this ain't gonna cut through the car door. And Randy's like, she refuses to cut off her leg, and I guess he gets bored, so he leaves. But she breaks the hacksaw on the door. And then it's nighttime again. Remember when I told her to get her bare grills on? I think she heard me. Right after she drinks her own piss, though, it starts raining. Uh-oh, but then the radio says something about severe flooding. 
happy hydration moment over. Did you know you can overhydrate? Like when you drown? She sees a car coming and gets real stoked about it, but it's just Randy. And there's a close up of the rest of the rat that she didn't eat and she gets a little smirk on her face and I'm endlessly intrigued about what her plan with this rat corpse is. And she rubs it on her leg to make it look like she had tried to saw off her leg and had died in the process. And then she stays real still while Randy pokes her with a stick. And then he thinks she's dead and he gets closer and she stabs him with a shard of glass and pickpockets him. And he's like, gosh, bitch, why you gotta be like that? And she's like, I got your car keys. And he's like, where you gonna go? Your leg stuck. And then she turns on his car alarm and chucks the keys into the woods. A police officer shows up cause he's like clearing out everybody before the, the floods happen. And Randy like sprints back up the mountain and is like, what's up? We all good, I, I locked my keys in the car. It's gonna be fine. And then the police officer gives him a ride because everyone trusts the shifty man. So Julianne Huff is drowning in the truck. She tries to like last minute panic, saw her leg off, but then the truck gets swept away and the tree that was blocking the door falls and she gets thrown from the truck and she's like, I'm free. And she takes off her sweatshirt and leaves it, which is how we know the movie's almost over because she's not gonna have to sleep through another cold night because she ain't got a hoodie no more and she gotta be real sexy wear her little tank top and her shorty shorts whenever she she beats up Randy and what have you. She lumps along in the woods for a little while and finds a cabin and someone inside is screaming because of course they are and she sees bear traps all around. I bet she throws Randy into one later. That's just my intuition talking here. So she peeks in the window and sees uh, a girl strapped to the bed and then goes around to the front of the house and hears Randy monologuing about how his papa was a preacher and he used to drag him out to the barn when he misbehaved and string him up for a day and a night because someone needs a backstory because all Julianne Huff really has is that she's mildly dissatisfied with a nondescript fiance who keeps flyers for hookers in his truck like just put the number in your phone or something. So she gets inside and Randy is lecturing to turns out multiple people about how if you hadn't stopped to help me, you wouldn't be in this predicament. This is your fault, which is exactly what he said to Julianne Huff. This isn't how to be a successful hobo. You kind of have to bank on the kindness of others. This is the wrong approach for your lifestyle, Randy. His whole thing is to punish people for being nice to him. It's a great moral. Anyway, he shoots the police officer in the head with a nail gun. Side note, how is she walking? Her leg was cut off from blood flow for a week. It shouldn't have mattered if she sawed it off or not. Julianne Huff goes into the house and sees multiple dead people. Is this a thing he's been doing? How has no one caught on to like the trail of bodies he's leaving in his wake? She grabs the officer's gun while Randy's upstairs being weird. And she goes to the room with the tied up girl and tries to free her, but then Randy's coming back, so she hides behind the door. And then Randy's back is turned and she has a clear shot that she doesn't take because then she wants to make sure he's looking at her and say some sassy things. And then she still doesn't shoot him. And then she waits until he lunges for her and then shoots the gun into the wall and then loses the gun. Julianne Huff, you're doing really good. And the girl gets away, but Julianne Huff is now unarmed, stuck in the house, and she goes into another room full of more dead bodies because Randy is an eager beaver. They wrestle around a few times, and she keeps stabbing her fingers into his wounds, which is a move that I respect and condone, and then she throws him out a window and he lands in a bear trap. And then she gives him the whole creepy guy speech about, I don't know if you know how bad this situation is. You lost a lot of blood thing that he gave her at the beginning she feeds him back these lines verbatim like she's just been like rehearsing it in her head she wrote it down as he said it because she was ready for this moment i like the confidence but then she leaves him in the bear trap and gives him a knife because she's gonna give him the same chance he gave her that doesn't seem like the best plan like, I like the gesture, but I'm not feeling this, Julie. If she had done exactly that and then been like, ha ha, JK, and then pulled a gun on him, then the movie ended, that would have been fine. But Julianne Huff and the little girl limp into the darkness because I guess people that live in cabins don't own cars. So the key element that I think these movies keep missing is a story and possibly some characters. I loved watching Julianne Huff stuck in a truck eating rats and having to be smart and collecting rainwater in the plastic bag for her wedding dress, but that's a very particular taste that I personally have. They tried to rush in some character motivation right at the end with the, my daddy beat me in the barn monologue, but like, who cares at this point? There's five minutes left to the movie. Also, what about the main character? What does she want? What's she gonna do now? How has she changed? What about the little girl whose family just got massacred? What's she up to? Oh, by the way, Randy's name is Christian. I figured that out at some point. 
If you want to recommend a movie for me to watch next, then tweet me with the hashtag quest for the worst. Also subscribe for a video every Thursday and hit the little bell button so that you're getting... I don't know why I do this every time. I'm genuinely trying to stop. But anyway, hit the bell so that you get notifications for my videos. Thank you.